Well, welcome to Coffee with Job and uh, Happy Christmas. Hope you had a good Christmas day. We had a lovely time up in the Blue Mountains with our grandchildren, daughter and son-in-law. As we continue to reflect on Job, and can I, just as we do this, can I refer you to just a couple of things? One is Greg Sheridan's latest article, which he gave me permission. It's behind a firewall on the Australian, but I've been able to, he gave me permission to put it on my blog, so it's there. And I put a link to it. And also um, the Romans 8, Road to Hope. Again, we looked at that yesterday, and you can have a look at that. But as we're coming back to Job, Job chapter 30, the last part of the chapter, verses 24 to 31, I, I have to say that while I've been doing this, I've been so conscious of so much sickness and ill health. And people who've died, even as, as we've done this, there are those of you who've contacted me uh, to tell me about your husband or your children or just a parent who, who has died. And Job is so relevant to all these situations. And I was thinking about that with the death of someone called Clive Bailey. Now, uh, I'll, you'll see why at the end, but it affected both myself and Annabel. Clive's death affected me in different ways. It was extremely poignant. Uh, not least because he appears to have had a, a similar illness to what I had 10 years ago. And Ruth, his wife, uh, said that they were in hospital last week, just basically just thinking about what had happened to me. And, you know, I, I got a rather callous tweet from somebody saying how can you say COVID deaths are, are a tragedy, they're not a tragedy? And my response it was just simply this, every death is a tragedy. I, I just, I, I cannot comprehend how a Christian would think otherwise. But especially, there is a, you know, someone who's lived well and someone who's gone, there's a particular tragedy in that, not least for those of us who are left, not for them. So anyway, let, let's go back to this passage and, and you, you'll see how all this ties up. Verse 24 of chapter 30, Job speaking again. Surely no one lays a hand on a broken man when he cries for help in his distress. Have I not wept for those in trouble? Has not my soul grieved for the poor? Yet when I hoped for good, evil came. When I looked for light, then came darkness. The churning inside me never stops. Days of suffering confront me. I go about blackened, but not by the sun. I stand up in the assembly and cry for help. I become a brother of jackals, a companion of owls. My skin grows black and peels. My body burns with fever. My lyre is tuned to mourning and my pipe to the sound of wailing. There are so many powerful images in that. You know, it's funny, as, as I'm recording this, you can probably hear the sound of children splashing in the kind of communal swimming pool that we have in our uh, apartment block. But in the midst of that joy, I know that there are people who sorrow and suffer as well. Now, Job has, has, has two main aspects of this. He's deserted by God, verses 24 to 26. His close, closeness with God is replaced by aloneness. He's like William Cowper. Where is the blessedness I knew when first I saw the Lord? What peaceful hours I once enjoyed. How sweet their memory still. But they have left an aching void the world can never fill. Once you've tasted of Christ nothing can ever satisfy you after that. And his contentment is replaced by the churning inside. He feels like a besieged city. It's not the streets, gangs, it's what God has done. How much pain can a human take? Is he near the point of madness? What is happening to him? He's acutely miserable, socially, spiritually, emotionally, and physical. It's a little wonder that he cries out, the harp and the flute were instruments for joy, but now they're only playing dirges. It's like playing pibroch, bagpipe, pibroch music. It's, it's a dirge. It, it's a song of lament. So how do we cope when this happens to us? Forgive me for taking a little bit longer today um, for this, but I do think this is important. Firstly, we keep right on to the end of the road. There's a deep insight here into the psychology of grief. Perhaps Job is too, Job is too assertive. Perhaps there's too much self-pity. But he does have integrity. Job 
chooses not to give up, to suffer, live, and trudge on to the end. He's not denying his faith. He's not, not denying God. He cries to God, it's you. Romans 5, 3 says, tribulations produce perseverance. Job is learning. His whole life is being sharpened and deepened. Shallowness is one of the great curses of modern life. Can I just refer to Clive again in that? He wasn't a shallow man in any way whatsoever. Secondly, count your blessings. We do not value them until we lose them. Calvin says this, for there is nothing easier with a man than to make himself believe that he shall always continue in a happy state when he is once in it. We are strangers in this world. We are passing through. Calvin says, let us call upon God and wait at his hand for whatsoever it shall please him to send us. I think about that in our own circumstances. You know, you're conscious living in a, in a strange land and on a temporary visa. You know, all of us in this world are on a temporary visa. We're strangers in this land. Then the third thing is this. You look to Christ when, there, when you are in trouble. Where is there any hope when you're in such a position? It doesn't come from remembering the past. It comes from finding Christ. At the bottom of every pit stands Christ. In bringing many sons to glory, says Hebrews 2.10, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the author of their salvation perfect through suffering. Chapter 5, verse 8, although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. So Christ had the mockery, the physical suffering, the social rejection, the desertion by God, the innocence, the churning inside. He had that churning inside. And also the loss of family and friends. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss. The Father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory. Well, our dear brother Clive Bailey has been brought to glory. We mourn for the loss of the church here on earth. But I'm going to play you this wee clip as we go and hopefully I'll see you again tomorrow. It's uh, made, he was the headmaster of Calig Coligio San Andres, one of the things he did in Peru, in, in Lima, in Peru. And when they heard of his death, this is what the school and the pupils and the teachers made in tribute to him. And you know, when I die, I want people to remember me like that. May God bless and comfort Ruth and all the other Baileys. And if any of you see this, we are, you know, our thoughts and prayers genuinely really are with you. And we are so thankful that your husband, father, grandfather, was not just part of your lives, but ours. And we long to be with him again. God bless you. See you tomorrow.